under the manager's presentation, item 11A is a live presentation on education partners. At this time, we will have a presentation from Nick DeMassis um, from the library. He'll provide an informational presentation this evening. Thank you, President Duncan, and thank you, City Manager Curtis Luther, for the time. Uh, I'm going to bring up my screen here. focus on the the word open uh, the adjective begets the verb uh, if we here at the library have open minds and open doors then we can in turn open minds and open doors of opportunity for everyone in our community and that's why one of the most difficult professional uh, decisions I've had to make was closing our doors, our physical doors, last March 14th. But we did not sit around and pout. We didn't uh, sit there confused. What we did is we quickly pivoted into remote services, uh, either through social media, through email, through the phone, uh, anything we could do in to be able to uh, help anyone out there uh, with whatever they're looking for, whether it was information, um, anything, any services. Uh, we also upgraded our Wi-Fi. Uh, if you come to the library, you can often see people sitting outside in their cars. They don't even need to come inside the building. They can sit out there and get our Wi-Fi. What we did is we upgraded it so that the reach of our Wi-Fi uh, extended uh, across the parking lot and provided service that way. Digital library cards, um, that's the ability to access our databases, uh, even though, again, our doors were closed to our physical items, uh, everyone had access to our databases and other digital resources. Curbside service was something that uh, really kind of happened organically and across the state. Uh, most libraries uh, engaged in this, and as you can see there in the middle, what we had were uh, paper bags. Uh, people would uh, request their materials. We would uh, we would get them, put them in the bag, give them a time that they would be able to come up, so they weren't so that other people weren't around at that time, and uh, grab their materials. So we had appointments to be able to uh, start that curbside service, and that was pretty quick, as you see there on the right side of the screen. Started May fourth. We also had. Uh, safety pro uh, protocols in place when materials were returned. We didn't just stick them back in the shelf and we didn't just stick them in that paper bag. Uh, we took some time and uh, 48 hours or 72 hours at the beginning and, uh, and have worked back from there as some of the science has come back on how long the virus can, can stay active on materials. And if you look in the right hand side, the quarantine, that cute little title up there, that's not where we kept your teenagers for a year. That is actually the teen section. And uh, logically that's where all of our uh, materials were being quarantined. Then uh, we opened to the public on June 1st, and as you can see there on the left side, computers, fax, and copiers only, trying to make sure the technology uh, was there for people, whether it was uh, filing for unemployment, um, uh, getting in contact with loved ones, accessing information from uh, you know the different CDC, etc. Uh, we had a week of that, and then we opened up to full services, and as you can see from those uh, posters that were created in-house, uh, we were uh, uh, being uh, uh, safety conscious was was in the front of our mind. On the left there, we were able to move some uh, some of our technology around to make it less contact. Our kind of our mantra was um, we wanted to reduce touch and we wanted to reduce tension. So any kind of touch points, and what you see there is our uh, self check and really making everything self-serve. We could open up the more that people could serve themselves. And then uh, reducing tension points is just how, how can we make sure that people can navigate the library, um, not putting barriers and obstacles up or saying no, 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 unless um, you know we had to, but really making it, you can see the stickers on the floor, really making it visible on how to safely navigate through the library. 
We also evolved our curbside service, those paper bags you saw, uh, to drive up. And they would drive into one of those two spots and then uh, make the phone call and a staff member would come out and put it either in their dri- or passenger side uh, or in the back seat. And then they were able to um, have access to materials that way. Passive programs. So you see the bundle of books, those were selected by staff and then the bundle would be um, available for checkout. And on the right hand side, those paper bags, those are crafts. We ended up giving away over a thousand of those. Um, people were just delighted with them. And you can see kind of a holiday one from last fall there are two individuals that uh, I, I, their parent took the photo, sent it into our Facebook of them um, with the craft that they had created from, from our kits. Other passive programs, we partnered with the Downtown Business Association. In the window there, um, you see in each of those windows, there is a poster that's actually a page from a storybook. And so this was a story walk. And at each of the stores, you could go up, read the page, and then move along uh, to the next store to visit, hopefully buy things, and also continue uh, through the store. So that was a partnership that was very popular with our downtown businesses. Other passive programs, SAD, um, a SAD lamp there on the left, SAD being seasonal affective disorder. And so those are lamps that you can just put nearby on your table and that, and you can imagine last fall, uh, only complicated by everything that had been going on the months before, um, those suffering from seasonal affective disorder had the opportunity to get these to be checked out. On the right, is uh, kind of a paintbrush and a board and it's sort of like a watercolor but you're not actually painting anything sort of sort of zen zen like and people are able to do some of those passive programs we also had a lot of virtual programs and uh, you see there uh, Catherine Clark who is our programmer head of programming and then uh, Professor Marcus Brower and he gave us or this was uh, for the public as well but it was uh, uh, his research on implicit bias training. Very interesting, still available on our Facebook if you want to watch it. On the right-hand side, that is Sarah, one of our programmers, and she's putting together a children's program, a virtual children's program, and we've been doing that regularly as well. In-person programs returned last July. Um, again, we have, we have a large, physically large library, so we have some advantages that other um, libraries perhaps don't. Uh, we also have a newer library, so the air system is very good and turns over um, all the air within uh, every 15 minutes. So we were able, and we were one of the, probably a leader in the state, um, or were a leader in the state in terms of providing opportunity, in-person opportunities in a very safe environment. We also pushed our programming uh, out to the parking lot. And this was a partnership with Biff. You see there and the kind of in the background is one of their movie screens. And so we had four or five uh, weeks of of movies where people would pull up in the car and we had them all spaced out um, and then watch the movie with their family through the radio uh, inside the car. The family on the right, um, Taylor sitting in the back with the baby on her lap. Many, many people said this very thing. Um, and this has meant a lot to us. Uh, and it is what has kept us going and making sure that we have been able to provide as much programming and as much service as possible um, safely. We've had programs outside. Uh, there on the left is a kids program out in the back of the library. We had not had programming back there, but we pushed it outside uh, as much as we could. Some more music there in the middle, and then our Wednesdays at the library on the right. On the left, you might remember this, election day. And uh, so the library is a polling place and working with Lori Stotler, working with Captain Mullen, working with Deputy Chief Murray, um, we, we uh, made the library a very safe um, and accessible polling space, uh, very much a success. Um, again, reducing tension, no incidents um, at all. On the right, this is something that's happening. Uh, it was happening just, just this um, last weekend even. Uh, those are school pictures. Um, 
we will be having about 800 to 1,000 kids that will be getting school pictures um, through the library and through a grant from American Family Insurance because many of them did not have the opportunity uh, last spring and possibly even this year. And this has been hugely popular. So one more evolution in our paper bags to our drive up spot, winter's coming. So uh, you see Julie waving on the left there. We took one of our book drop slots and we put a window in it. And now um, even after COVID, uh, we are going to, we have service where you can drive up, push that button there. And then a staff member comes out and gives you the items that you have put on hold or any other kind of service that, that we start to deliver through there. This is something that I am exceptionally proud of, of our staff. Uh, March 14th, as I said, is when we, was the last day of service. And if you look on the left, it's very hard to see, um, perhaps, but it's March 19th. So within four business days, our staff every day was doing professional development. And you see the list of assignments there on the left. On the right is day 47, um, as they kept plugging away and developing and learning and making themselves um, even stronger at once we were able to open up. Uh, down at the bottom there, total hours for the year, we had over 2,800 hours of professional development as a result of that. Um, mostly a lot of it online, but also in person um, there, that's our staff there that you see. We were able to take advantage of our closure uh, with a radio frequency frequency ID project uh, that had been in the works. And so uh, we just made it happen really fast and tagged over 155,000 items. That's every item in our library had to be taken down from the shelf, a sticker with a antenna in it, RFID tag, and then um, scanned and then put back on the shelf uh, for convenience. Now you can check out books in a stack instead of scanning each item uh, with the barcode like you do say in a grocery store. So I wanna pause here just for a second. Um, this is, these are our staff members. Uh, Fable purchased some um, 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 sanitation um, wipe there for us to give out and uh, to say thanks to all of our patrons, but I want to say thanks to the city, uh, its emergency operation center. Uh, it was absolutely essential uh, the work that was done, and I'll just I'll just the shout outs go to Lori Luther. Uh, I said Captain Mullen, Deputy Chief Murray, Patty Miller, um, Beth Krieger, Sarah Locke, Eric Eric Miller for all different numbers of of things that it, we couldn't have done without them. And uh, to me, the sign of great leadership is when everybody sort of knows knows what their strength is and they step forward at the time they need to step forward. And all those individuals in some way or another um, just provided the, uh, the ability for us to do the things that we did. And then obviously uh, for you, the city council, to have the trust and faith in all of, uh, in your staff um, to let them do what they do best. And uh, we were able to um, uh, to be able to, again to do the things we did after that. This was uh, built upon something we've been working about for a number of years, five years. Uh, we had a strategic plan uh, that laid out where we were heading. Uh, probably, to me, the most important uh, commitment on there is actively welcoming all members of our community to BPL. Um, from that everything else flows, actively welcoming all members of our community to BPL. Well, one thing we did is we changed our organization uh, structure, uh, silos. We often talk about silos, and there you see some silos, departments. Um, and we took that and we changed it around. If you look at the three on the right in that red rectangle, now everyone is looking across the landscape of the library. It's not programming for adults, it's programming. It's not services for children, it's services, etc. And that was an important maneuver that we did um, that also prepared us to be ready for, uh, for anything and uh, um, uh, voted well when, we, when COVID hit. What we also did is said, look, anybody can move up in this organization. Mobility is a thing. Uh, and so we had to create an advancement chart to make it very clear that what each position does 
what's the educational requirement, what's the pay, uh, et cetera. And you can work your way all the way up as far as you want. Transparency. Uh, we also worked very hard at removing barriers. What uh, barrier is more unwelcoming than on the right there, those security gates. Uh, the first thing you see when you walk in the door are security gates. Uh, that gives you, is that is that welcoming all members of our community and, and creating a, a welcoming atmosphere? We took those gates out and we put a welcome desk there and working with one of our partners, WISE program, uh, you see Alexis there. And after a little while, we said, this is an absolute smash hit. And we upgraded to another desk. Uh, and now we have Britna and Esther that are welcoming every day at the library. We removed more physical barriers. On the left there, you see um, some of the counter that was there uh, up to a few years ago. You see some drop slots there. You see some notes on top, just to make sure. If you don't know that's the children's books, we're gonna tell you twice. Instead, we just removed that. And then on the photo on the right, you can see removing barriers between the staff and the public. This was the reference desk that was there, very functional um, in its time. Um, but its time had come and gone. And now what we did is on the right there, everything is mobile. You can remove everything out of there. We've had uh, concerts there, we've had events there and really taking advantage of the space. That's the other end of the counter, remove that, move the copiers and some of the other technology fax machine up closer to the staff. Again, making it porous for staff and the public to interact. The children's area, that was the children's area desk and uh, we removed that and now we had a tree there uh, by a Milwaukee artist underneath it, all kinds of interactive. Kids were pulling their parents in to uh, interact and play and read with them before the parents had a chance to pull out their phone and sit off to the side. It was a, it's a, it was a smash hit and then uh, COVID hit and we cleared out all that furniture, but it will be back. So when we remove the desks for staff, what are they doing? Where are they sitting? Well, they are roaming and they're engaging. And you see Jerome there um, um, talking to uh, one of our young little visitors. And you see Yasmin on the right. We said, get in and play with them. Get in and talk to them, build relationships. Some of our community partners, Beloit Arts Center, that was mentioned earlier in the meeting. On the left there, they have a gallery at the library and then State Line Literacy Council. Um, uh, that they hold their graduations as they hold their classes at the library. Spaces, you already know about the Blender Learning Cafe. Uh, if you look at the picture on the left, that used to be the children's program room. When we turned that into the cafe in a partnership with the uh, high school and Cary, in uh, Cary Group, said that we would get a new children's space. And that just got completed in August. That is our new children's space. Um, two shot, two photos of it. And it's already being um, used with the proper spacing, but we can't wait for it to go uh, full speed. Something we've been hearing about a long time is a caregiver's room. Uh, we have a very large library, but if, uh, if someone is um, having a, say a meltdown, uh, the parent often felt they had to go out into the cold or go outside. And so here's a caregiver's room for all kinds of uses. New spaces, one of our uh, great partners is Blackhawk Technical College. Uh, they brought the funding to build the new spaces and uh, the agreement is when they're not in use for class, they are ours for anyone in the community, to groups in the community and also for library programming. So that photo on the left is a high tech uh, classroom. It's got the microphones hanging down. It also has a roving camera um, for both virtual and in person. On the right there is a GED testing room. And so uh, that will have lots of different uses and applications uh, as well for many of our groups. Food share, employment and training uh, is co-located now at the library and many of their clients are clients of State Line Literacy Council or Blackhawk Technical College. And so what we're trying to do is get everybody within the proximity of each other. These are two new classrooms that we have for State Line Literacy Council that they teach, um, that they deliver their ESL classes, their citizenship classes, their GED and Spanish out of these rooms. And again, when there's not a class in there, these are available to any anyone uh, in the community. 
This is an office. State Line Literacy Council has some of those desks, but we also have um, three other desks in there that are available to nonprofits in the community. Not everybody can afford rent. Not everybody needs more than four, five, eight hours a week. Um, or even less. And so these desks are now available um, for those groups. And then those cubicles are upstairs for those that need something a little more private. In the staffing area, uh, it's we're again, we're focused on the internal as well. We turned an office into a, a professional development room. And so now people can engage in webinars and reading um, professional journals, etc. And then on the right, those three heads, the head of resources, head of services, and head of programming. We built these three offices here and brought them down from the second floor so that they were in the mix of things. Partnerships. Any school with any children in it is our partner. And so we have the Beloit Turner, Our Lady of Assumption along the top there. You see Rock County Christian homeschoolers, lots of um, resources for homeschoolers down in the bottom. We have Lincoln Academy that's opening up just um, just uh, uh, yards away and up to 700 kids. That's all we care about. There are going to be 700 kids from our community that are going to be walk, be able to walk over to the library. Rochelle Elliott in the middle there uh, is fantastic. She's with the school district, director of literacy. And then on that right, I'll just take a second to mention that is um, the school district uh, you know has has been closed school has been closed but Brady uh, I'm sorry Brandy um, has been over here and what she does is help parents and the students to get into their um, Google classrooms and um, even even late into the fall there were still kids um, that were not had not attended any classes. So that partnership with them and her ability to come over and help them on has been vital as well. And it gets back to that fact that we have been open. Uh, open minds means innovation. Uh, when you are an innovative library, the word gets out. The word has gotten out. We now have a, uh, a brewing a partnership with PBS Kids and their Ready to Learn program for the Beloit Public Library to be the flagship um, library in the in the state of Wisconsin, um, working working with them and, and providing the programming here. So we are having those conversations now. Um, so a couple of the others, Innovate Culture, working with entrepreneurs in the high school, and then also Rock County Jumpstart, which works with uh, Black business owners to help give them the tools that they need. This was just last Friday. This is what it's all about. Um, is an open door so that all members of the community feel welcome, come in and avail themselves of whatever services that we have and that they need. Thank you very much and, and thanks for your support. Thank you very much, Nick. I just wanna say that I know firsthand the wonderful projects that are going on at the library. I know um, I had attended a, a Girl Scout meeting there, and of course it was social distance, but it was taking place there. And also I uh, had to get my library card and go get some books for a, a Christmas program that I had to read for, and also Black History Month, so thank you. That said, I know there may be some counselors that may have some comments, so we'll just go down the list just with comments, uh, with some brief comments, beginning with Vice President Anderson. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, Nick, for the presentation. Uh, you know, it was really nice to see some of the projects from when I first got on the council and was on the library board, seeing those finally come to life and uh, really grow. And I'll tell you, I really miss hearing the phrase best boy model. It's been a while. So uh, it was nice to hear that again. Uh, and then second, I really would like it if you could just give your staff praise. Uh, my day job, I work with kids and I've got a number of them that absolutely love our public library. And we have very welcoming staff. They're always very warm and friendly when our kids come in and uh, even when I have a kid that's having a rough day and is kind of ha having having some emotions, the staff are very understanding and treat the kids with respect even when they're having a rough day. So uh, your, your staff are amazing. The library is amazing. And I just want you to pass that praise on to them. Thank you. Counselor Blakely. Thank you so much for your presentation, Nick. 
I agree. The library has always been an important, important aspect of Beloit life. And it continues to be so under your leadership. And I really want to thank you and the library staff for all you've done to not only keep things afloat, but keep them, can't think of an appropriate metaphor, but um, moving along a pace in spite of the pandemic. Things like the, um, the window drive through I utilize myself a lot. And so as a council member, as the council rep on the library board, and just as a citizen of Beloit, I'm really grateful for you and the work the library does. Thanks so much. Thank you. Councilor Forbeck. Well, Nick, thank you. And your presentation was so great. We could really pay attention to every single item that you were naming, and they're all great. Um, Talking in for the city of Beloit, when you take our story outside of the community, um, we used to talk about areas of excellence, and the library is almost even exceeding <laughs> um, being an area of excellence. We're very proud. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Keys. Thank you, Madam President. First, Nick, I want to thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, and also thank you and your staff for your leadership and initiative um, in maintaining accessibility and services to our entire community through this really challenging year. Um, and personally, I want to echo what many families have, have said, is that my thank you for um, all the programming and the kids programming, because uh, especially uh, during the summer and the fall, uh, it was really excellent to safely get out and uh, participate in educational programs. So thanks again. Thank you. Councilor Levy. Uh, Nick, thanks to you and your staff for all you do for the uh, city of Beloit and the Beloit community. And I also want to commend you for an excellent job during the election time. You are absolutely right. It was wall to wall people outside the doors all day long. But I, I think everyone that participated there felt safe. And there's nothing that the people that was working the elections asked for that you weren't like Johnny on the spot and say, we got that. Don't worry about it. You know, it just helped me. As a first time uh, captain, I uh, helped make my job a little bit easier and more relaxing when I say, Nick, I, I don't have this. He's like, eh, don't worry about it, Kim. I'm going to get it. We're fine. <laughs> so I just want to thank you um, on behalf of everyone who worked that day uh, for a job well done. Thanks very much. Councillor Prussia. Uh, I, I am going to say it's wild. Wow, Nick, that was great. And everybody at the staff, everybody at the library, um, it, it's just that was a great presentation. I'm just amazed at how far you've come from the, when I joined the library board as the rep there, and and the progress. And it was so, it's so really good to see that that fulfilled. Actually, you know, a lot of things that were being talked about back in 2018, 19 are reality now, and it, it served you well. And I'm just really impressed with both the leadership, the vision, and, and making Bo better Beloit. That's, that's been my mantra for all of my life, make Beloit better. When I leave it better than I found it. And um, you've, you've certainly gone beyond that. This, this is an excellent sign we just don't see enough of. And will somebody please alert the media to cover this story? Thank you very much. Send them 10 copies of your presentation. And by the way, you can quote me on that. So anyway, I, I'm going to stop there because... You've, you've, you've spoken a long time, and it was a great presentation, and people need to hear the story. So thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks to everybody there. Okay. Thank you. Play well. And again, Nick, I just want to say thank you to um, uh, you and the Blake Public Library staff and board for your hard work and for making our public library a place for so many exciting programs and services. So thank you. Job well done. Next. Thank you. You're welcome. And 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 the, what you just said is our public library, and that that's that's been absolutely essential as the support we've gotten from the um, the city manager, the city council, 
um, and all the city staff. So uh, we couldn't do it without um, all of that support that we've gotten. Just lastly, that presentation went really, those slides went really fast um, intentionally. And so we posted them on our website um, as well, if you want to go and just take a leisurely stroll <laughs> through that again um, and look at those pictures or any of that um, um, a little more in detail. So thank you.